Hi, good evening. I want to uh, thank you for joining me. Um, this lecture is just a short one on sycophancy or what a sycophant is. And um, there are many different definitions out there. Um, I do respond to as many of the questions as I can get. And, and an individual was asking me about a sycophant and they were identifying it as a type of uh, sexual perversion. But I don't know where they got that information um, because it's an inaccurate. Uh, what they were describing was something totally different than a sycophant. So I don't know where they got that definition, but I'm going to go ahead and answer this one for you, DH. And um, what a sycophant is, is if you've ever watched TV shows or movies, they, they always will have a sycophant thrown into a movie where you've got somebody that is kissing up and is a flatterer or in the ancient times or the medieval times, you would have a person in the court of the king who would constantly give praise to the king or the person of higher power. What a sycophant is, is an individual that has what we, in base terms, call a psychosocial disorder or what we call a dysphoric aspect of their own self-image. And as a result of this, the sycophant seeks to find themselves attaching to others and finding their place ingratiated upon the others through flattery, deceit, manipulation. The roots of sycophancy is it's usually found in, in deep rejection within an individual's life, uh, primarily in the first six years of life, mostly before the fourth, between the second and fourth age. Um, what happens then is it comes to fruition in the teen years. It can be a, a father or a mother that rejected a child. And then during the teen years, because they're aware of the you know, abuse that happened, um, or they become aware of the abuse that happens, they begin seeking to find their place with others through flattery or manipulation. And so what it is is a sycophant is an individual that seeks to please those that they are around. And when they find somebody that they feel has power or position or something that they would like to be, they'll gravitate towards them. Now, a sycophant is an individual who will seem very sincere. Um, they, because of, of the way that they have learned to control their emotions, they will be able to manipulate and ingratiate others by compliments or by agreeing with them more correctly on whatever it is they seek to do. For instance, if a person says, you know, I really love the pizza down at such and such a place, the sycophant will then say, oh, yes, so do I, and they'll start bringing out all the qualities and reasons why they like that pizza. They, they're, they're quick at, at analyzing situations. They're very quick at analyzing situations and determining what they want to say. Words usually flow right quite easily to them. And they've learned over time, the older one is, they learn over time what things work and what things don't work. So you can test a sycophant by saying, you know, something like, yeah, I really love the pizza at such and such a place. And then when they get started on why they like it too, and why it's a superior pizza, then just stop and look concerned and say, you know, a matter of fact, now that I remember right, I don't like their pizza. And then watch and see if the person changes their attitude. If they say, you know what, you're right, I really don't like that pizza too, that's a sycophant. A sycophant is somebody that seeks to ingratiate themselves towards others and finds what we would call their, their position by trying to become agreeable to an individual in order to be accepted and to be liked. And usually it's because they don't like themselves or what they appear to be themselves. And they will blame themselves for the rejection or they'll hate their self-image. And so they'll seek to grab a hold of other people and find a way that they can get an inroad. What's really sad is um, sycophants always appear happy on the scene, but usually they're the most miserable people they are. They have an empty void in them that just doesn't get filled. And they can also be very manipulative at times and 
enjoy seeing others. This is where a psychopathology comes in. They can also enjoy seeing others get hurt or have bad things happen to them. An individual that is a sycophant is somebody who has no barriers when it comes to lying. Their truth gauge is completely gone. And they will simply say whatever they feel is right in order to join themselves to another individual and act as if they are united on the same thought process. Uh, if you read about it at all through, you know, Psychology uh, 103 or something like that, or you go through Webster's Dictionary or the Free Book Dictionary or even Wikipedia, you'll read the story of a sultan in the 15th, uh, 16th century, around 1560, 1580, I think it was, who had a court, uh, a courier in his court that um, he allowed to sit at dinner and he's, the sultan talked about the first time he tasted eggplant. He says, this is really delicious. And the courier started going on and on about, oh, yes, it is. And this is some of the great qualities of it. And the sultan, before he even finished the meal, he got so upset that he pushed the plate up. And he says, you know, I've grown tired of eggplant. It sickens me now. Well, the courier immediately changed his stance on it, too, and started talking about all the reasons why egg eggplant was bad, and now it's considered a member of the nightshade and even poisonous. And, and the sultan said to him, has your mind so easily changed? A few moments ago, you were only speaking of the greatness of it. And he says, well, I'm not the courier, you know, the court courier to the eggplant. I'm the court courier to you, sultan. So... This is where the idea of a sycophant being a flatterer, um, they've been called bootlickers. Um, when I was in the military, I, I would see guys that would just constantly try to get their way up and get, because rank would be handed out to individuals. They only had so much rank they could promote people in. And they, there was always a sycophant in the bunch who would kiss up and, and lick boots and try to get that. Um, you will read in some of the definitions that it's called a fig and, any of you that have studied anything about Italian or, or even mafioso in the uh, it, the mobs, even in the Irish, they would describe the fig. And, and the fig was when they would do this symbol like this. And what it meant, it, it it's, alters a female's part of the genitalia. And when they would say that the person was a fig and they would do this, it meant that they were a sycophant or a flatterer that you could not trust and that they were a manipulator and they had no respect for them. So that's where sometimes people get confused and think it has to do with, with specific types of sexuality and sins, but it's not. So if you know somebody that's a sycophant, you need to pray for them. You need to help them understand that it's a form of escapism from not facing reality and not dealing with what's happened to them in their earlier lives. So it's an individual that has an empty void within them that just cannot be filled except by the Lord God. And so that's where the dysphoric aspect of the self-image arises from. So this is Dr. Knotts, and I hope I've clarified that. Um, I've got a, a long list of people asking me about different subjects, and I'm going to try to cover them as, as much as my health allows me to. So Lord bless you, and you have a great day.